Hello everyone. In this set of videos, I'm going to give a quick introduction to linear regression. We'll talk about what a regression is, how it works, and how to run and interpret them using Excel. To follow along, I recommend that you download these two Excel files. I first want to start out with why do we need a regression as a manager? In managerial economics, we approach a lot of different problems using calculus and algebra to figure out what is the optimal decision to make. The problem is that in real life we don't just have demand functions and cost functions and any other kind of function that we need for this. We're going to have to figure out what they are for ourselves. And while we may never know the true function, what we can do is estimate them using data. And that's really what we're going to be doing here with regressions. While we could spend an entire semester or multiple semesters just talking about regression analysis, this is meant to be just a quick introduction to get you started. If you're interested in getting into more detail on this, then I would recommend taking an econometrics class. Let's start out with asking, what is a regression? In the broadest sense, a regression is just a tool to describe the relationships between two variables. Typically, we think about some outcome that we're interested in and some other variables that we think have some relationship with that outcome. I want to emphasize right now that we are not going to talk about causality yet. Right now we are just going to focus on regression as a tool to describe relationships. In the next set of slides we'll talk about causality and then later on we'll talk about the problems with determining causality. Mathematically, the goal of running a regression is to estimate what we call a data generating process, or a DGP. When we think about the relationship between our outcome variable, which we typically call Y, and the rest of our variables that we call X, there is some true relationship between these variables out there, a relationship that we will never know for sure, and that's what our DGP is. When we look at a DGP, we have y on the left hand side, that's our dependent variable, and on the right hand side we have f of x. f of x is called our determining function. That's the function that translates whatever our x's are into our y. And then there's one more term here, the Greek letter epsilon. y is determined by f of x, the determining function based on the x's, plus epsilon. Epsilon is what we call the error term. While our x's, which we call the explanatory variables, are things that we can observe and measure, everything else that we can't observe and measure are in the error term. So y is determined by what we can see, x, but also many other things that we don't see. The error term is very important to a regression, and we will come back to that concept later. Up until this point, we have not made any assumptions about what that determining function f of x actually looks like, but we're going to do that now. When we run a regression, we are going to assume that the DGP looks linear. That is to say that we have all of our terms here just added up, like you see here. We have beta naught, that is our intercept, and then we have beta 1, that's our slope. Just an equation for a line. Of course, we still have that error term in there added on at the end. Ignoring that epsilon for the moment, this is just the equation for a line, and this closely resembles the linear demand functions that we've thought about up to this point. So what are we going to do with this DGP? We have a dependent variable y, we've got an explanatory variable x, and they have this relationship, beta naught plus beta 1x. We say that this is the relationship that these variables have in the population. This is the true relationship between x and y. The problem that we run into is that we don't actually know what beta naught and beta 1 are. If we did know that, then we wouldn't have to be messing around with the regression at all. That true relationship between variables is out there somewhere, we want to know what they are. Now the idea with a regression is that we are going to try to make our best guess as to what that relationship in the population is, but we don't actually see the entire population. In statistics we define the population as all of the possible observations that are out there that we might be interested in. For example, we might be interested in the entire population of a country, could be millions upon millions of people. Now, if we were able to actually find the entire population, then we would know what the relationship is. This is typically impractical, and we have to do the next best thing. That is to say, 
collect a data sample. A sample is a selection of observations that have been chosen from the population. The whole field of statistics is all about using samples to make some claims about a population. And in the next set of videos, we are going to talk about exactly how we do that. The ideal way to collect a sample is randomly. We define random sampling as every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected for the sample. When samples are chosen randomly, this also means that every sample you take is going to be different. It's going to have different members of the population in it. This means that if we were to run the exact same regression to estimate the exact same things with two different samples, we're going to get different answers. And that means that our estimates themselves are also going to have some randomness to them. In the next set of videos, we'll talk about exactly what that's going to mean for us. For right now, just understand that there is randomness there. Before we move on, we need to know a little bit of notation as well. When we're talking about a sample, I'm always going to use the capital N to denote the sample size. That is the number of observations in our sample. If I'm talking about a variable, for example x, and I just say x, that means the variable as a whole, but if I have a subscript on the x, I'm talking about a specific observation within our sample. The subscript i denotes a specific observation. So if we have a total of n members of the sample, i could be member 1, member 2, member 3, all the way out to n. Now that we have a sample, we're ready to actually run a regression. Regression is our method for coming up with those estimates for beta naught and beta 1. Remember that beta naught and beta 1, those parameter values, exist in the population and we can't see them. When we run a regression using our sample, that's going to give us what we call the beta hats. Those are our estimates, beta naught hat and beta 1 hat. And whenever we have a hat, that means it's an estimate based on our sample. Once we have those, and we'll talk about exactly how we get to those in a minute, we can put those into our equation, and that's going to yield some predicted values that we call y hat. The y hats are not the same as the actual observed values of y in the sample, but they are what we would guess based on our estimates, our beta hats, and our values of explanatory variables, our x's. Let's think a little bit about the intuition behind how we would actually go about figuring out what beta naught hat and beta one hat ought to be. If we think about our sample with n observations, that means we have n values for y, y1, y2, y3, all the way up to yn, as well as n values for x, x1, x2, and so on, all the way up to xn. Ideally, we want to pick beta naught hat and beta one hat to make all n of these equations true y1 plus beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x1, y2 equals beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x2, and so on all the way out to yn and, and xn. The problem with this is that we have n equations and only two unknowns. Chances are we're not going to be able to actually find a beta naught hat and beta 1 hat that actually make all n of these equations true. It's just not going to happen. So what we're going to have to do is come up with a compromise. Come up with two numbers here for beta naught hat and beta 1 hat that will get as close as we can to making these things true. And figuring out what that compromise is is what regression is all about. 